Hey everyone, just a quick stream recap. If you missed the four hour live stream of the 3175X overclocking last night, we did end up taking second place for Time Spy Extreme Dual GPU. We're right behind OGS and we're ahead of Der Bauer, who is now officially uh, put on notice. So Roman, it's time for you to step it up. I know, I know Roman's got, uh, got the 3175X. He had a higher overclock than us with liquid nitrogen, but he didn't do a Time Spy Extreme benchmark with two GPUs. I don't know if he did one at all, actually, but uh, did Cinebench for sure. So Roman, AKA Der Bauer, we're waiting for your, your return to uh, second place for, for this benchmark. So yeah, we're in second now. We are behind OGS by three or 400 points total. The problem is that OGS's score is comprised primarily of GPU. So we're ahead in CPU there, but Time Spy Extreme really likes GPU. So uh, let's, let's just recap what we have for setup and show you where the 3175X ended up. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their high-end thermal compounds. Thermal Grizzly makes cryonaut paste for high thermal performance and conductivity without being electrically conductive, so you don't have to worry about shorting components. Cryonaut is particularly good for replacing stock GPU pastes, as cryonaut is a non-curing compound. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for where we ended up, the, the big question was, with chilled water, which is what Intel used at Computex, can we get the 3175X to about the same place they had it? So they were at five gigahertz and we, we did do that. So we got up to 5.1 gigahertz stable. I think it was 1.42 volts at that point for vCore. Uh, VCCN was something like 2.1-ish. And uh, we were fine. It could have gone a bit higher, but start needing some exotic cooling. So. Uh, 3175X does do, in fact, 5 plus gigahertz on chilled water. That is not really that useful to know because you're probably not going to use chilled water. But for purposes of benchmarking, it's possible. Power draw during Time Spy Extreme was spiking to about 800 watts, and uh, Cinebench goes a bit higher because it requires more voltage to run the same clock stable. We actually struggled with Cinebench and stopped at about 4.8. Uh, v Mesh, or Mesh rather, was at 33X for the bigger overclock for Time Spy Extreme and VMesh was about 1.28, 1.25 in that range. Memory we were really lazy with, so I ran with just six of these Corsair sticks because uh, they are mismatched, but we had the most of them. And these are only 3,200 megahertz. So at the end, we switched them to six G-Skill sticks that are also mismatched, ran them at just 3,600 megahertz CL16. So that is absolutely the weakest part of the benchmarking, but after four hours, didn't really want to play with memory. So we'll put up, if we should have already, but we'll have screens uh, screenshots of the scores that we can put up for you. And we ended up at 16,663 for the total score times by extreme, which is behind 17,016 for OGS, ahead of 16,365 for Gunslinger, and ahead of 16,248 for Der Bauer. And then the, uh, the score was comprised of a 16,870 graphics and 15,585 for CPU score. So that CPU score is pretty insane and shows the scaling that happens with the 3175X. Der Bauer, for example, had a, a 7980XE that was at 13,000 points, and his graphics score was a bit higher than ours. So Roman was using two 2080 Ti's, and I think had an I2C connector, like a Volt mod on them, which is what allows him to get a bit higher graphics score, but we kind of compensate a bit with the Titan RTX's. So uh, Roman definitely has a chance, because Time Spy Extreme is mostly graphics, but our graphics score isn't better than his. So if he wanted to do Alan 2, he could do it. As for the rest, um, interesting points, I guess. With Cinebench at 4.8 gigahertz, we're doing 6,400 points or thereabouts, plus or minus 40. And then I believe Intel score is in the 7,000s or something for their 3175X benchmark they did at Computex, but I don't know what memory they were using. It's probably out there somewhere. Um, the bench itself will show you. So the bench, there's still cold water in here, but it was obviously ice most of yesterday night. and. Um, we were just running with two more, or well, one more three radiator and then one 560 millimeter radiator. Oh, that's cold. From uh, EK. So this is a separate loop for the GPU. And then the bigger one is used for the CPU. And the reason we did that is just so that the water doesn't get warmed by the GPUs before it hits the CPU. So ice melts a lot faster this way because we're dumping like 1300 watts into the bucket sometimes but uh, it does cool things more effectively. So CPU is on its own loop. We're using an EKWS block, which we have footage of it from CES we can show you. It's the workstation block they just showed and came out with. So we use that. That's hooked up with the ZMT tubing uh, to the dual DDC, to the bigger 
reservoir and then the smaller EK pump res combo used for the GPUs, which you've all seen this stuff before in the past. The motherboard's the Dominus. We have two power supplies for it. We ran an AX1600i, just grabbed what I had available. So AX1600i for the GPUs and then a EVGA 1600 watt for the CPU. And we only used for reference four power connectors. So I think it, I don't remember how many pins it has total, but it's got another two EPS eight that we could use and we didn't because it's not necessary. So that's the bench settings again, uh, went over them already, but it's about 50, 51 X for the ratio. Our submitted score is 50 and then, uh, 1.42 volts, about two, 2.1 for V sin. And then we had the, uh, mesh at 33 X and all the power limits lifted and stuff like that. So for what next we've officially beaten Derbauer's score, of course, all in good fun. He's, uh, yeah, we were messaging this morning and I think he could definitely beat our score if he wants to go and post an Allen 2 one. It's just a matter of getting the GPUs out. So uh, Roman, respond whatever you feel like it, I guess. But uh, if you don't know who he is, go subscribe to Dare Bauer on YouTube and hopefully we can have some fun back and forth once both of us find the time to do more. And if Roman does decide to go Allen 2, we now, we now have the capabilities to do it as well. Uh, so we got the doer in and we're um, mostly geared up for it. I do have a Der Bauer Beast pot. So this, whether or not he responds, doesn't really matter if he responds. It's just, just a fun back and forth game for us. But if he doesn't, um, we are still planning to do some liquid nitrogen overclocking because Roman was kind enough to send this along previously and we just needed a mounting bracket for the 3175X. Uh, even if we don't get that soon though, that's that's from Asus, even if we don't get it soon, we can still use this for other things like, I don't know, let me know in the comments, I guess, what you would like us see, uh, what you would like to see us apply this to for overclocking. Uh, for sure, can fit on most of the standard mainstream platforms. So we can do 9900K, could do 9980XE, stuff like that, maybe some rise and stuff, I don't know. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see happen on the uh, XOC side, I guess, because we're new to it and can kind of learn with some of the parts that you're interested in rather than just going with the obvious biggest processor there is. So yeah, comments below for what you want to see next. Uh, we are of course doing normal reviews every pretty much uh, every couple days we're filming reviews still. So you'll see plenty of those coming up this week. Ask GN's coming up this week, news videos, all that stuff. But uh, occasionally we'll have some XOC in there uh, as we kind of get used to this stuff. So you'll see more of it, but it's not displacing anything. So, and I think this will be the second video going up for today, depending on the Z390 Dark VRM uh, video. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the stream. It was a lot of fun and we enjoyed having you all in chat. Of course, enjoyed uh, going back and forth with, with uh, chat on some of the XOC members were in there talking about their own CPU scores and how to beat them and stuff like that. Lots of fun. We appreciate everyone watching. And uh, yeah, five gigahertz was possible on the 3175X that Intel showed at Computex, but it did in fact require a chiller. So impressive CPU for scoring though. Uh, and Time Spy Extreme impressively scales with all of the cores very well. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time. Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel. Today we are talking about the Intel 3175X CPU for overclocking.